Okay, so I'm going to talk to you this evening about the Earthworm Image Recognition Project, which is a project that I've been working on this autumn winter, and it's going to be going on for a bit longer. So we're only partway through, but I wanted to give an update and give an opportunity for people to get involved, uh, let you know what's coming. So I wanted to start with Earthworm ID, just to make sure everybody's aware, because we get asked a lot of questions about how you identify earthworms, etc. So in the UK and Ireland, we can identify our earthworms mostly on morphological features that we would observe down a microscope. So this includes looking at a feature we call the TP, which are these two bumps on this one here, which you can see on the saddle. Um, and we need to know what segment numbers it's on, what shape it is. We'll also be looking at how spaced out the hairs are around a segment. We'll be looking at tiny little grooves on the hair. So these are features that you can't see with the naked eye. Um, that you can't necessarily pick up with a photograph. Um, and you can only really see them properly on a, a still deceased earthworm that you were looking at down a microscope, a preserved specimen. Um, so this means, uh, and we're actually quite lucky actually in the UK, the most of the rest of the world, you actually have to dissect the earthworms out and look at internal organs to be able to tell them apart. There's not a lot to go with externally on earthworms. Now, there has been guys that have been produced that look at things like colour and size, but they've never been proven to be reliable. And my personal opinion is that we probably don't know enough about the variation that you get within and between species to be able to do that definitively. Um, particularly as Frank and Kerry have alluded to in their talks, there are some species where we have very, very little data on them full stops. So we certainly... Uh, Certainly need to be careful about what assumptions we make based on a very, a very few records, even when it comes to their ID. So earthworm sampling is quite easy. We can train most people to do that. But because the ID requires microscopy, um, it is a bit more niche and less people take it up. Uh, we've tried looking at field ID and we've tried looking, at the, looking for these features with hand lenses, which we weren't able to successfully do, even people that were specialists with lots of experience with earthworms. And we've tried guiding photographers, wildlife photographers or amateur naturalists to photograph the features that we need to identify earthworms from photographs. And we've not been able to do that as well. So we haven't been able to successfully photograph earthworms to see the features that we need. And we haven't been able to see them in the field. Um, but emerging technologies have opened up lots of opportunities. And there's an app called iNaturalist, which many people will be familiar with, which includes image recognition technology. So image recognition technology is where um, it, it's machine learning where essentially like an AI can establish from a photograph what something is. So a really good example of this would be Google Lens that um, many people will have used. And um, iNaturalist has this built into the platform, uh, as does iRecord um, now as well. And the way that their image recognition works is it takes records that have some form of verification with a uh, and have a photo, and it tells the system that, that that photo matches that species. And as more data is submitted to these platforms, they learn more and more about which photos belong to which species. The problem we've got with earthworms is because they need identified from a preserved specimen, which looks very different from a live specimen, uh, with something like iNaturalist where it's the community that is verifying things. Quite often people are agreeing with identifications that are not necessarily right. And what I found with the iNaturalist data, which I've fed back to iNaturalist as well, uh, is that most of the records on that platform are not actually verifiable. So having one person agree with it isn't enough for, for it to work its way into the National Earth Family Corning Schemes data set. And over time, what I've seen is that the number of record, the diversity of species within the records is going down. So the number of species records on iNaturalist when I did an analysis about a year ago, over 50%, 59% were Lumbricus terrestris. Now, Lumbricus terrestris is a big worm. 
it is one that people photograph when they see, but it's certainly not the most common. And when I looked through these photos, a high proportion of them were not Lumbricus terrestris. I couldn't say for certain what they were, but I could say for certain what they were not in some cases, because Lumbricus terrestris is a really big worm. So when people have got a tiny worm in their hand in the photo, I know it's, it's incorrect. And what I think is happening here is the AI is suggesting a species ID and people are trusting that, accepting it, people are agreeing. And I believe that is sending the AI off on a on a tangent that's incorrect. So the more data that's going into the app, the more the image recognition technology is learning the wrong thing. So what I would like to do is kind of work on image recognition in a slightly different way. And I was approached by the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology about a project that they've got coming up, or it's now, now in progress, from the Department for Environment of Food and Rural Affairs, so DEFRA. And the concept is an app where you take photographs and it can ID earthworms, so similar to uh, iNaturalist, etc. But instead of it being community photos that are you or, or crowdsource the, the photos that train the AI, it would be images of earthworms that have been reliably identified. So fo earthworms photographed live, but then the specimens collected and identified and checked by an earthworm specialist so that we know exactly which species that photo of it, that photo of that earthworm is. So this is very much an experimental project. We can't say for sure whether it will work, but we've come up with a protocol for training the AI, and I'm going to talk through that, and then a little bit about the results to date. So what we do is we're looking for earthworms in the traditional way. So as Frank described in his talk, that includes soil pit sampling. But if we want to try and get as many different species as possible to train the AI, the AI as best as possible, we need to sample from a wide range of habitats and a wide range of um, micro habitats using different sampling methods as well. So we'll go to a site, we'll do soil pit sampling, we'll look in dead wood, we'll look in dome, we'll look in leaf litter, et cetera, and we'll try and look at different habitats. So the earthworms are collected, and for those that have done earthworm ID before, they'll know, or sampling before, they'll know that when we dig a soil pit, all the adult earthworms that we can collect and identify, we pop them all in a tube of ethanol. Now, for this project, all the specimens need to be kept separate because any photo needs to be, we need to be able to match it to an individual specimen. So the earthworms are all separated, all the adults that we're going to identify. We don't do anything with the juveniles because we can't identify them species, so they just get returned to the soil. But the adults are put in these individual ice cream tubs that you can see on the right there. And then what we do is photograph all of the earthworms in the ice cream tub so that we've got uh, photos of, of different specimens and we get lots of different people to do that as well so that we get a range of devices a range of lighting a range of quality of images etc and earthworms move around a lot and they move their body shape so it's good to have lots of images even of the same specimen um, when this similar technology is being used with other species groups groups, so with carabid beetles, ground beetles, it was estimated that you needed around 100 photos of a, a species for the AI to figure out whether it can actually identify it or not. So we're aiming for quite big numbers in terms of uh, photographs, so I've, I've had lots of people helping and lots of photos. And what we do is the photograph must be of an earthworm in a standard ice cream tub, which I've, I've got the dimensions for. The whole ice cream tub must be in the picture and that's so that we've got scale so the ice cream tub provides scale for the specimen we don't add anything into the ice cream tub with the specimen because we don't want the ai to be picking anything up and we don't zoom in because that loses the scale then as well so we have a set way of sampling and also a set way of photographing the earthworms as well and we'll gather, like I said, lots of different images of the same specimen. So here you see the um, very excitingly named specimen WS023. 
So all of these photos are of the same worm. They're not all taken with the same camera or by the same person, but they've all been submitted. But you can see there, the first four at least, are by the same person with the same camera. But you can see that the photos are very different. The earthworm's moving about, it's stretching, it's bending over itself. So we need to try and get as many photos as possible so that the AI can recognise that these are all the same thing. Um, you can see with photos 16 and 17, the lighting's went a bit funny there. Uh, and it's give it a bit of a different look as well. So you can see why we need lots and lots of photos. So what happens after we've collected all the photos and the specimens is I take the specimens and I look at them under a microscope and identify them. If there's any that I'm not sure about, if they're really rare, I'll get them double checked with Emma so that we're absolutely sure. Um, and then I submit all of the data into iRecord so that the all of the data from this project is ending up in the National Earthworm Recording Scheme. In addition to that, we've then got the images. So I have all the different people that are involved will send their images to me, uh, where I'll sort them out into the different um, specimens. And then once the specimens are ID'd, all of the photos for a given specimen will go into the relevant species folder on a Google Drive that I set up that is shared with the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. And they do all the techie stuff. So they'll take these photos, feed it into the AI. And this is the phase that we're very much in now, so it's not complete. Uh, we're gathering photos for lots of different species. For some of the common species, I've got loads of images. For some of the rare ones, I've never found. But I've even got one fairly, well, it's uncommon, but it's definitely not rare. It's a Chalia Mamalis I've never found yet during this project. So there's still quite a lot of work to do. Um, the first phase of the project has been running Earthworm Sampling Day. So... I wanted to show that the project had uses, even if the app doesn't work. So I wanted to make sure that we were gathering new earthworm records, but that we were getting them across um, different parts of the UK and the preferably areas that hadn't really been sampled before as well, so that we're filling in some of those gaps in the distribution maps that we've discussed in all the other talks. So I've been up in North Yorkshire, I've uh, been in West Yorkshire, Derbyshire, London, and Wrexham in Wales. So I'd love to have went more places, but there is a budget and there are limitations. But if we had unlimited funding, I'd be going all over the country in every single vice county. But this was the best way I could use the, the funds that we had to do this. So it's no coincidence that most of those sites are in a line as I traveled the country. And on the Earthworm Sampling Days, I had a load of volunteers come along. I've got too many people to thank <laughs> um, for this, and they'll all be mentioned in the report that I produce on the project at the end. But the volunteers helped me sample, they took photos, and they submitted those photos to me. And without those volunteers, and if it was just me, I'd have a very small number of photos in comparison. So in terms of results, uh, we've done 10 FM sampling days to date. Uh, and that's had over over 70, 75 people have attended those days and helped with the collecting of the earthworms and the photographing of the earthworms. Uh, we've collected 346 earthworm specimens, photographed them and identified them species level. Um, there are more that have been, no, so there are some there that won't have been ID'd yet, but because uh, some need checked. That may not seem like a great deal for all those people in all those days, but it is quite a slow process. So it does take a bit of time. Uh, but when we look at the photos, it's resulted in nearly 7,000 photos to date. And th I think that's just absolutely fantastic. So we've got 31 species in the UK and Ireland. So in theory, we need 3,100 photos to do all species, but obviously we have a lot more of some species than others. Uh, and these are our results to date. So the species list on the right hand side, the ones that are black are the ones that I found and the ones in grey are the ones that are yet to find. So 276 of those 346 earthworm specimens have been determined species level. So some of them might have been juveniles or unidentifiable or some of them are in limbo while I'm waiting to get them checked. Um, we found 16 out of the 31 species that you get in the British Isles. So we've still got 15 more to find. And 6,367 images have actually been submitted to CH to feed into the AI. 
what's really interesting with the spe with the species list here is there's some very common species missing. So Icenia andrei and C Icenia fetida, Dendrobina venita are all composting worms. So we're not finding them even in cow paths, deadwood, but if I look at compost bins, I probably will. Uh, Sacellius mammalis, I mentioned as well, is another one that I would expect to find if we mix up the microhabitats and the places we look a bit more. So what I'll be doing next, the next few phases to get more data, is I'm currently partway through sampling farms in the Chilterns to make sure that all agricultural species are well represented because this is who the initial app would be aimed at if it works. I'll then be working with some other earthworm specialists. So uh, Aidan Keith is being shown here without his permission and he's on the call so he might kill me for this. But uh, Aidan has been collecting earthworms himself as well using the same methodology and I'm going to get data from him so he's going to submit that data. Um, I know that Olaf Schmidt in Ireland has offered to help as well and he's waiting for a response from me with the methodology so I need to get back to him as well. He can maybe help fill in some of the gaps with the Irish species that are more difficult to find. And then the final phase in the in the image collection uh, part of this project is to get members of the public to send me personally some live earthworms from their garden. So things that they found under logs in compost bins so I can hopefully try and fill some of that gap. I was intending to do that sooner, but I decided doing that during Christmas post time was probably a recipe for disaster. I didn't want a load of earthworms um, in the post for a long time live because uh yeah they might not have survived or they might have escaped so i'll be looking to do that in the new year uh, and more details will be coming about that through the earthworm site is uh national earthworm recording scheme bulletin and one last thing i just wanted to mention one of the sampling days i forgot to take the ice cream tubs with me um so what we did instead was we took photos of earthworms, but with natural backgrounds, because a lot of the images we're getting with the ice cream tubs are not that pretty, and you can't see the colour as well. So we've been gathering images that we'll be able to use for future ID guides, uh, and if we ever can ID any um, from photographs, this will provide some nice colour photos for us. So that is it, and then I'm ready for any questions. <laughs>